Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. To be honest, the summer got pretty busy for me and I obviously haven't posted in a long time, but I know I gained some new subscribers since posting my last video, which is how I work from home full time. So because there's a few new people subscribed to my channel, I thought I would kick off this video first just with doing a really short introduction. Obviously, if you don't care, you can just skip ahead. I'll make sure that there's timestamps or chapters on this video. But yeah, I just kind of want to reintroduce myself um, before we get into the video of how I choose to live an intentional life. So if you're a new subscriber, thank you for being here. Um, my name is Lachlan. I just turned 26 this past weekend. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada um, with my boyfriend of five years and our two rescue guinea pigs. I studied public relations in school and now I work for a big healthcare organization on their communications team. In my spare time, I like to ride horses. Um, I'm really close with my family, so I like to try to see them as often as I can. We don't live super close together, but I do try to see them at least once a week. What else can I tell you? I like going on little road trips. I, um, I recently just started getting into running this summer, so that's been fun. And then when I'm not busy, I like to experiment with filming and editing, obviously uploading my YouTube videos, but I haven't been very consistent with it, so I would like to um, get back into it as we kind of get into the fall season. So yeah, like I said, I want to kind of restart this channel with this video of how I really try to live an intentional life. Intentional living is something that I've gotten really into over the past few years, and I think I've really worked hard at trying to implement it into my own life. Although I wouldn't really say that I identify as a minimalist, I think that I take a lot of principles of minimalism and try to implement them into my life. So hopefully you like that kind of content. But overall, I just kind of want to continue posting about intentional living, productivity. I've done some personal finance content in the past. Honestly, just kind of whatever I'm feeling, but um, hopefully this channel can be a value to you and yeah, I'm happy you're here. Okay, that was a lot of talking. So let's get into the actual video, how I try to live an intentional life. Before I get into my actual list, there is something that I really want to emphasize. And it's just that I feel like life really ebbs and flows and what I want out of life, I think, fluctuates as I get older. But this is just kind of a list of things that I try to do to live a happy and intentional life. It's important to keep in mind that everyone is different and your intentional life should obviously be unique to you. Mine is unique to me. But if anything, I hope that my list maybe serves as some inspiration for you to get started. Keep in mind that I'm definitely not perfect and I know I struggle with consistency, but these are all things that I do try to be consistent with. So the first thing on my list is volunteering, and this is something that I just started really getting into this year. I volunteer at a local hospital. They have a really great program. I go for about two hours a week. It's been a really amazing opportunity for me. I don't work in healthcare, and I don't really have an intention to work in healthcare, but it's been really cool to get basically hands-on like patient experience. I basically go in and visit with patients on a variety of different units. A lot of them are older and struggle with dementia, things like that. But overall, it's just been a really, I guess, like eye-opening and meaningful experience for me. And I think it adds a lot of value to my life. The second thing on my list is prioritizing a hobby. The hobby that I like to do is horseback riding. If anyone cares about, you know, my horseback riding journey, I have a video. I think it's called like, how much does it cost to lease a horse in Alberta or something like that, but I kind of talk about my journey getting into it in that video. But basically I rode horses very, very casually for a pretty small amount of time as a child. And then I picked it up as an adult. I think it's been just over a year now that I've really gotten into it. I ride about two to three times a week, depending on, you know, like what's going on, but I love it because I think it's been really healing for my inner child. There's just something really magical about being able to, you know, do something that you used to really love as a kid. And that's just what horseback riding is for me. So I really make it a priority. It's kind of like a non-negotiable in my schedule. I just love it. Okay, next up is not so much of a fun one, but it is prioritizing therapy. I've basically done therapy on and off my whole life. Um, but I really started doing it consistently probably the past couple of years. This is one of those things where it's like the older I get, the more I realize there's things that I need to work through. And even though it's not really like fun for me to go, I really see the benefit to just like my overall well being, mental health, um, and happiness. Therapy is a tough one because I realize it's not accessible to everyone, it is really expensive. And I'm really lucky that I have benefits that cover the cost. 
of basically all the therapy that I want to do. But I just want to emphasize like if it is something that you have the means to do, you can afford it. I would really recommend it. I don't know if everyone in the world can benefit from therapy, but I think a lot of us can. And I think if more people did therapy, um, the world might be a little bit of a better place. So I don't know, just my two cents, but it's something really important to me that I really do try to prioritize. Something else that I really try to do is choose experiences over material items. An example that I have for this, my boyfriend and I were really good about this. Usually when we get each other gifts, it's either like, doing a little road trip, like Airbnb getaway for a weekend or something like that. I think that going on trips and traveling is something that we would rather spend our money on, I guess, more than most material items. Obviously, you know, like I said, I'm not perfect. There's definitely things that I still buy, but overall, I think in general, I really do try to prioritize um, like spending money on experiences more than just items and stuff. This one kind of goes along with the therapy one, but it's to say no more often and stick to your boundaries. I'm not gonna lie, I actually feel like I'm really good at this. Uh, I feel like I haven't really struggled with it a ton. This one can be big things, it can be small things. It can be somebody asking you for a favor that you don't have the capacity to take on. It could be a family dinner that you don't wanna go to. I'm gonna be honest, I feel like I've never really been a people pleaser. I've always kind of been a little bit selfish but if there's things that i don't want to do i just say no obviously there's exceptions to this i can't actually say no to every single thing i don't want to do that would be a crazy life but i try to the things that are reasonable that i don't want to do i just say no i stick to my boundaries number six this one i feel like i kind of need to be careful with the way that i word it but it's to quit the job. I feel like a lot of people stay in jobs that they're just not happy with. And I understand that not everyone has the financial or not financial means to just, you know, be switching jobs all the time. But for me, if I'm in a job that I can't stand, I'm gonna change it. I've told this story a few times on my channel, but basically when I graduated university, I got a job that it just wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. I felt like we were slightly mistreated as employees and it just really wasn't a good fit so I quit and I left but with that said I mean I was obviously responsible I wasn't getting financial support from anyone else so I still had to provide for myself and basically like I just made sure that I had another job lined up because I couldn't just quit and have no backup I needed the income all I'm trying to say is you don't owe anyone anything and most employees are replaceable disposable Basically any employee can be replaced and that's just the truth. So if you don't like the job you're in and you get a really good opportunity, don't stay because you feel like you, I don't know, like owe it to your boss or whatever. This is something I get really passionate about. I feel like I could talk about it forever. So I'll just go ahead and move on to the next. Next up is expand your knowledge. Um, this is something I'm not great at, but I'm trying to be great at. Once I graduated university, I felt like I kind of didn't know what to do with myself. So I registered for like a random um, psychology course at another university, but just things like that, you know, register for another course if you want to, keep learning, be a lifelong learner, read a book, do some Duolingo, whatever it is, but just keep learning, keep stimulating your brain. It's good for your brain. It'll help prevent things like dementia in the future. And yeah, it's just good for your well-being. Next is probably the thing I struggle the most with on this whole list, and it is get off of your phone. I am constantly deleting and then re-downloading all of my social media apps. I have such a love-hate relationship with them because, you know, I feel like I grew up on social media. I work in social media now. Um, and at the same time, I just, I hate it. I think a lot of people can relate to this, but I have this constant struggle of, you know, like wanting to post my YouTube videos and, you know, be online, have my little corner of the internet. But then at the same time, I want to like completely erase my entire digital footprint. I don't know, it's a constant battle that I have in my head. And I feel like, especially people that work in social, they all really feel this way. Next up is create a morning and night routine. This is another one that I struggle with. My morning routine, I have not gotten it down at all, but my night routine, I feel like I've been really consistent with. At the beginning of the year, I had in my notes app like a full list of my perfect morning routine and then like my perfect night routine. And it was like a 10 step thing. The truth is it just wasn't realistic for me. That's not gonna work for me and I'm not gonna stick to it. Um, so I think, you know, create a simple, 
night routine, for example, and you're more likely to stick to it. Number 10, this is another one that I feel very passionate about and I think it's very key in living an intentional life and that is declutter your space. I've always been a chronic declutterer my whole life. I think I declutter sometimes to a fault. I declutter things that I still need. I'm working on finding a balance, but um, I think most people that I know are the opposite. Most people I feel like struggle with decluttering. Maybe that's just the people around me, I don't know. But um, I do have a few tips for you. The biggest thing for me is I need to know that I use every single item in my house on a regular basis. And if not, if I find an item that I haven't used in the past year, I will get rid of it. That's just me, obviously everyone's different. My biggest tip though, and this is what I tell everyone, always have some sort of decluttering giveaway basket on the go. In our household, I feel really strongly about this. We always have a box of stuff at the front door that's like a donation pile. For me, decluttering is not like a annual or like every six months type of thing. For me, it's constant. If I always have a donation bin on the go, I'm less likely to just accumulate stuff. Next up on my list, another thing that I struggle with, um, and it's prioritizing movement. I've always been kind of like on and off hot and cold with my fitness journey. I've never been like a super sporty athletic person. During like the pandemic into 2021, I got really into F45 for a bit. And then this past year I started going to the gym, riding horses a lot. And then like I mentioned most recently, I've been getting into running. I've done a couple 10K runs. Again, I think that movement and exercise, it's important for your well-being, your overall, physical and mental health. So yeah, like I said, this one's always been a struggle for me, but I'm trying, I'm trying to find consistency. I'm trying to incorporate it consistently into my routine. Next up, this one's fun. This one is Live Your Rich Life. I've also mentioned this quite a few times on my channel, but the book, I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Remy Sethi. I'll link it in the description. I also have it on Audible. But this book completely changed the way I think about money. And basically the author has this whole philosophy that every single person's rich life looks different and should be unique to them. And that essentially you should spend on the things that you love and cut costs on the things that you don't. And this is something that I've really prioritized over the past few years. This is another thing that I feel like I could talk about for a long time, but I feel like this video is getting a little bit long, so I'll skip it today. But I would definitely recommend checking out this book. It's not like a typical personal finance book. I've read a few of them. This one's very different. Um, and I think it's good for people who are, how do I say this, like financially literate. And I think it's also good for people who aren't. And if you really don't want to read it or listen to the audiobook, he also has um, a YouTube channel, podcast. So I'll link those down below if you want to check it out. That's all I have for you today. I hope that somebody found this video helpful. If anything, I hope somebody got some inspiration from it. If anyone has any video requests, I'd really love to hear them. You can leave them in a comment. You can message me on one of my socials or I always leave my email in the description. But that is all I have for you today. So thank you for being here and I will talk to you next time.